Now let's consider the rules on hindrance. We'll start with the hindrance that does not come from the opponent. A common decision is whether an incorrect call from a line umpire was a hindrance to the player or whether the call made no difference to the playing of the point. Here, the chair umpire decides it was an ace anyway. In this instance, the chair umpire decides the receiver could return the ball, but was hindered by the line call. The first serve must be played again. In all of these cases, the chair umpire must make the decision. Hindrance also applies in this example, when the ball kid starts to run on as if the point was finished. The chair umpire replays the point. Line calls also come into play with hindrance. Here, Moresmo plays a forehand that is called out by the line umpire. The chair umpire instantly overrules and also decides that the line umpire's call came after Safina had missed the next shot. Here, the ruling was that Safina was not hindered and so she loses the point. When it comes to hindrance, there can be some unusual rules that you don't see very often. There is little you can do as an umpire in circumstances like this. I think it actually hit that bird. Did you? It flew over. Unbelievable. I hope we've got that because that <laughs> is a first. Well, this has got to be a first at Wimbledon, surely. We don't normally consider noise from outside the court to be a hindrance, but when a spectator shouts out during the service motion, Gaudio, the server, is distracted. At the end of the point, the chair umpire should ask for quiet during the service, but it is not ruled as a hindrance. Sometimes noise can be very distracting. In this case, the chair umpire has to make the decision instantly if the point has to be played again. The rules say that if a player deliberately hinders the opponent, he loses the point. If the action is unintentional, the point is replayed. The most common hindrance is when a player's cap falls off. Assuming this action isn't deliberate, the correct procedure is to replay the point and to advise the player that if it happens again, it will be judged as a deliberate hindrance. A player cannot hinder themselves, however, and so here, Lutzi loses the point. This procedure includes a ball falling out of a pocket. Any second or subsequent unintentional hindrance would result in loss of the point. Now, when the player drops his racket during the point, it is normally an advantage to his opponent, so we don't consider it a hindrance.